9.5 Solve applications of quadratic equations. So in this section, we're going to look at the equations, uh, application problems that are going to be set up in terms of quadratic equations and solving. So as usual, the word problems I want you to do in four step format. First, always assign variable and define your unknowns. Second, set it up equation and third solve the equations and then lastly will be the interpretation four step format so for the first example it said that the product of two consecutive odd integers is 99 find the integers so in this case what we don't know is two consecutive odd integers so my first step will be defining unknowns I will say that first odd integers and then second odd integers. Those are my unknowns. Since they are consecutive odd integers, the units are two units apart. So I can say that it will be first one, the smaller one will be x, and the second one will be x plus 2. So set it up equations, since it said that the product since the product is multiplication so so the first number times with the second number that is equal to 99 now we're going to solve this so it will become x squared plus 2x is equal to 99 and subtract 99 to both sides so this will become minus 99 equal to 0 this is factorable, so therefore it will be x minus 9 and then x plus 11, and which give us x minus 9 equal to 0 and then x plus 11 equal to 0. So I got two possible solutions. One is 9, one is negative 11. And notice that both of them is odd number. And the problem never taught you that the integer must be a positive integer or negative integers. Therefore, in this case, I have two sets of solution. So now the interpretation step four. So first set of uh, answer will be our integers. Okay, integers are the first number will be nine and the second number will be eleven because two more units. And the second set of uh, answer is integers are the first number is negative 11 and when you add 2 to it that will become negative 9. So we have two sets of uh, solutions in here. So on the, uh, when you do homework read carefully because sometimes the question will only ask you find the positive odd integers or find only negative odd integers. Okay? So then you only need to write down one interpretation Next problem, find the base and the height of a triangle whose base is 4 inches more than 6 times the height and has the area of 456 square inches. So this is the area problem. In this case what we don't know is what is the base and what is the height. So A, uh, first step, I would say that base of triangle and then the next one will be the height of triangle. So now, if I read the questions again, the base is 4 inches more than 6 times the height. So the base is depending on where the height is. So therefore, I can say that my height will be x. And now we're going to translate the base, which is what? 6 times the height and then 4 inches more of it. Now I have the base and the height in terms of a variable expression. We can set it up the equations. Recall the area of a triangle, area is equal to what? 1 half base time the height. So I'm going to substitute this into uh, this formula so that uh, I can get my equation set. So what we get is 456 is equal to 
one half times six x plus four times the height x. Now I'm distributing it four hundred fifty six. One half distributed into six x plus four that will become one half times six is three x. One half times four is two. And remember you need to multiply that again with what? X. So finally if I distribute it again with X, that will become three X to the second power plus two X. Now we are talking about solving quadratic equations. So subtracting four hundred fifty six to both sides. And this allow us to compute uh, factor. So I want you to pause it and then factor this one out. Okay. So factoring this, so we use this technique, right? So first we're going to multiply three times four hundred fifty six. So three times four hundred fifty six. That gives me 1,368. Uh, this is a negative, so that will be we got a negative sign right there. And what we want is a positive 2 right, in the middle term. Now we need to find out two numbers right here that multiply to be one, negative 1,368 and add it up to get positive 2. So that is basically uh, positive 38. negative 36. Now we divide both by my a which is divided by 3. When I reduce it this will be 1 and this will be 12. And the first part I cannot reduce it anymore so my factor will become right, my factor will become the denominator go to the front so it will be 3x plus 38 and then x minus 12. That's what we got. So you can double check, right? Uh, this will become this. So continue this, solving this. Let me erase this. So it's a little bit tougher. You need to use a calculator help because this number is very big, right? But it's still doable. So now continue solving this. It will become three uh, x plus thirty-eight is equal to zero or x minus 12 is equal to 0. And solving the first part of the equation, 3x is equal to negative 38, and divided by 3 on both sides, it will be negative 38 over 3. And the second part equations will become 12. Since we are looking for the length, uh, the base and the height of the triangle, negative answer is not applicable in here. So my final answer, step four, the interpretation, the height is 12 inches and the base is 12 times 6 because you need to substitute back into here. So 12 times 6 and then plus 4 that gives me 76 inches and that is my the final answer. Moving on to the next example. Rectangular tablecloth has an area of 8 square feet. The width is 5 feet short than, shorter than the length. What are the lengths and the width of the tablecloth? Round it to the nearest tenth of the foot. So, Meaning 10 of the foot, we need to round up to one decimal place, right? The tent. This part here. The tent. So, my first step, the unknown in this case is we don't know the length, right? Of the rectangle table clock, and then width of the rectangle table clock. So 
In this case, it said that the width is 5 feet shorter than the length, so the length is independent. So I can say that my length will be x, the width will be 5 feet short, so shorter, so x minus 5. So now, we know that the area of a rectangle, the formula is length times the width, so I'm going to substitute into this formula to set it up my equation. So, 80, area is 80 square foot, that is equal to length times the width. Now, we're going to solve this, which is distributing x, that will be x squared minus 5x, subtracting 80 on both sides, so x squared minus 5x minus 80. And now, what we want is the uh, to get 5 in the middle term. Once again, try to pass it and then get the answer. Okay? Try to get the factor after you pass it. So, 80, I need to get uh, two numbers subtracted to get 5. So, probably you try to factor it out already, but probably you might not be able to find the factor. And this may not be factorable problems, right? So, that we have to consider those also. So, now, what we're going to do is, like, uh, if you cannot factor it out, remember, if it is uh, on a test, if it is if you're having difficulties on factoring to see the number, uh, you don't want to waste time to, you know, figure it out, like, 10 minutes figuring out how to factor Remember, you have other choice of solving this quadratic equations. In this case, we're going to be using this quadratic formula to solve the equations. So the quadratic formula is x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So we can always use quadratic formula to solve it. But if it is factorable, that is the fastest way. Okay? So always you will try to factor, spend like you know a couple of minutes to find out how to fact uh, factorable or factoring that. And then if not, then move on to using the quadratic formula. So this will be five plus or minus square root of five squared is twenty-five. Negative times negative is positive. Four times h thirty-two, three hundred twenty. And then square root of it. Now, continuing this, that will become uh, my x is equal to uh, 5 plus or minus square root of 345 over 2. Now, I'm going to try to break it into two cases 5 minus square root of 345 over 2. And another one will be x is equal to 5 plus square root of 345 over 2. Now use your calculator to compute this, right? Because you, we are trying to get a decimal number. Remember, the question itself tells you to round it to the nearest tenth. So 345 uh, minus square root of 345 divided by 2, that gives me approximately negative 6.8 if I round it to the nearest tenth place value. And approximation in the next one, 5 plus square root of 345 and then divided by 2, that gives me approximately 11.8. Since we are talking about the, uh, the length, so the negative number is not applicable. So finally, I can interpret it, which is the length is 11.8 feet, and then the width is 5 feet less, so it will be 6.8 feet, and that will be my final answer. Next example, example 4. So, example four, it tells you that the sun casts a shadow from a flagpole. The height
height of the flagpole is three times the length of, the, of its shadow. The distance between the end of the shadow and the top of the uh, flagpole is 20 feet. Find the length of the shadow and the length of the flagpole. Okay, so let's try to draw a diagram to visualize this. Okay, so that way it's easier for you to follow. So here's a flagpole and then this is the shadow going. Uh, the sun is going. Okay, so here's my shadow. So in this case, it said that the height of the flagpole, this is the height, and this is the shadow. Okay. So it said that the height of the flagpole is three times the length of its shadow. So I can say that the shadow will be what? x, and then the height will be three times of it. And the distance between the end of the shadow and the top of the flag, so from here to there, this distance is 20 feet. So basically, we are looking at a Pythagorean theorem right here, a right triangle. Now that we have an idea of how this problem is working, let's start our problem. So first step, what we don't know is the height, right? height of pole. And then what we don't know is what? Shadow. Shadow of pole. And we know that the height of the pole is three times the length of its shadow. So the shadow will be x, the length of the shadow will be x, the height of the pole will be 3x. Now we know the picture that's telling us to, uh, is a right triangle and then use Pythagorean theorem. So therefore, this will become what? x to the second power plus 3x to the second power. That must be equal to hypotenuse square, which is 20 square. This gives us x square plus 9x square is equal to 400. So 10x square is equal to 400. And when I divide both sides by 10, that will become 40. And then using the square root property, we're going to take the square root on both sides. That become, don't forget plus or minus sign. This become x square root of, right? Square root of x square. That is equal to plus or minus square root of 40. So when you simplify this, this will become x is equal to plus or minus 2 square root of 10. That's the farthest you can go. And, oh, the question also tells you to round it to the nearest 10. So let's round it. Let's use a calculator, right, to make it easier. So f square root of 40, that is 6.3. So with round it to the nearest 10 will be approximately 6.3. And make sure you use the proper notation, it will be not equal anymore, it will be what? Approximation. So since we are talking about the length of the pool and the height of the pool, uh, the height of the pool and, and then the shadow of the pool, so the negative answer is not applicable. So my step four, we can interpret it that the height of is three times of this so it will be 6.3 times uh, 3 right? 6.3 times 3 that will give me 18.9 and it is in terms of feet and then the shadow of is 6.3 feet and this will be our final answer moving on to the next example
So notice that I'm also like helping you to review on like you know formulas of area formulas and then Pythagorean theorems. Okay. Now, for this one, Gary just returned from a cross country trip. The trip was three thousand miles from. Okay, it's a typo. From. His home and then his total time in the plane for the round trip is 11 hour if the plane was flying at the rate of 550 uh, miles per hour what is the speed of the jet stream so in this case we know that the trip was 3000 And his total times in the plane is 11 hours for the round trip. And if the plane was flying at a rate of 500. Okay, so this one, you know that one trip, so let's put it in the chart, right? Like I taught you before rate times the time is equal to the distance that will be our first step and going uh, a trip from home to his uh, uh, from his home to the destination is 3000 so one way is 3000 so since you are going with the planes uh, it will be like you know uh, headwinds and then tailwinds remember those idea so uh, the jet stream is basically talking about like what is the uh, friction is going to be, air friction is going to be. So this will be, uh, I can say that I have like, you know, uh, with the wind and against the wind for two cases. Okay, I'll leave this part against. So two cases, and then we don't know what is the speed of the wind, right? That's the jet stream. So we know that each trip is 3,000. And then it tells me the total time is 11 hour. Right? The total time is 11 hour. So now we know that the rates, if you're going with the wind, that will be 550 miles per hour plus x. And if you go against the wind, it will be 550 miles, how fast you're going, minus x. So in this case, you need to uh, define that the speed of the jet wind, right, jet stream, speed of jet stream, that got to be equal to x. So the time is basically the distance divided by the rate. And the time is distance divided by the rate. Because when you're going, it's either with the wind, uh, with the wind, or when you come back, either it's like you know against the wind, like this kind of situation. And we know that those two times add up to be equal to 11 hours, so it will be 3,000 over 550 plus x plus 3,000 over 550 minus x that is equal to the total of 11 hours so in this case we end up in uh, rational equations right so multiply both sides by the lcd to clear the fractions which is in this case is uh, 550 plus x and then 550 minus x and you multiply to the left hand side and you multiply to the right hand side. And that will help me to clear the fractions and make it easier to solve it. Right? 550 plus x plus 3000 over 550 minus x and then equal to 11. So when I distribute it, 550 plus x, they cancel it out, and then this will be left with 3,000 times with 550 
minus x and then plus when I distribute it into the second one it will be 3000 times 550 minus x is equal to 11 times this so it will be 11 times 550 uh, square using difference of square format like this so uh, the number is messy meaning the number is very big but with the calculator it should be okay so 550 times 3000 that is a very big number which is I don't think it will fit into my equations right of the page right here 165 and then four zero and minus 3000 x and then plus 165 four zero minus 3000 x that is equal to okay, that is equal to and when I multiply 550 times 550 and then you multiply by 11, distribute it by 11, so that will become 3, uh, 332 and 570 with 0 extra and minus 11x squared. That's what I got. So it's a pretty messy number, as you can see, right? I doesn't even fit into one line. So now when I continue it, that makes it a little bit bigger because 165 times 2 is I will get on the right left hand side 330 with four zero that is equal to three three two seven five zero zero minus eleven x square now subtracting it three three two seven five zero zero uh, take away from three three zero 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 that gives me negative two seven five zero zero equal to minus eleven six squared. So now you divide both sides by negative eleven, so it will become uh, twenty five hundred taking the square root on both sides don't forget plus or minus sign square root of x square so that will become x is equal to square root of 2500 approximately will be uh, exactly 50 so now I can conclude that my last step which is my jet stream right speed of jet stream is 50 miles per hour because we can ignore the negative sign. So notice that we are reviewing everything in this sections again that we talked about before. Right? Here you go. The last example is work rate problem if you read it. So you can see that she can uh, fill in her hot tub. If you're using only the red hose, it takes three hours more than when you're using only the green hose. Now the question is, if you use both hose, the tap will be filled in two hours. How long does it each of them work uh, individually? Work? So, as I taught you before, in the chart, we're gonna fill it in the individual case, so which is the red, and then the green, and then the formula is rate times the time is equal to job done. So in this case, uh, the job that we are doing in each individual case is one job to fill in up the tab. And we know that the time that it takes on the red one is three hours more than the green. So my green rows will be X amount of time it takes by doing it itself. The red will be X plus three. So therefore the rate is 1 over x plus 3 and then the green is 1 over x 
that is our first step you know we know that together time right together time is equal to what two hours so now to set it up the equations we have set it up on the working together case which is the rate of the red one right because working together with combined rates plus with the rate of the green one that will be uh, times with the total times that they take to finish the same job so therefore in this case I'm going to distribute it uh, 2 to both of them so it will be 2x plus 3 2 over x is equal to 1 right I distribute the 2 now we're going to multiply by LCD to clear the fractions like before so it will be x times x plus 3 on the left hand side and then x times right, x plus 3 on the right hand side so continue solving this it will be 2 over x plus 3 over 2 over x equal to 1 when I distribute it, x plus 3 and x plus 3 cancels out, so it will left with 2x. Plus, when I distribute it to the second term, that will become x and x cancels out, so it will become 2 times x plus 3 equal to, on the right hand side, and when I distribute it, it will be x squared plus 3x. Now, simplifying on the left a little bit, distribute it to, and then combining like terms, that gives me 4x plus 6 is equal to x squared plus 3x. Noticing that this is a quadratic equation, so we're going to move everything to one side and then solve for it. So this will become 0 is equal to x squared, subtracting 4x on both sides, subtracting 6 on both sides. This is factorable, so it will be x minus 3 and then x plus 2. So by zero factor property, I got x minus 3 equal to 0 and x plus 2 equal to 0. So x is equal to 3 and x is equal to negative 2. Since we are talking about x is the time, right, right here, x is talking about the time. So we cannot have a negative time. So finally, use this, we can interpret it like step 4, which is how long does the green hose take by itself? Green, right? So green hose takes three hours, and the red hose take and then three more hours, so it will be a total of six hours. And this is the end of this session.